This is Bumani. He is a two-year-old male cheetah and the fastest mammal on the planet. He's one of God's most beautiful creations and today he's wowing the crowds at Eagle Heights Wild Animal Park in the south of England. Bumani was ham raised here at Eagle Heights from the age of three months. He was bred in a tier park in Germany, basically another zoo. And uh, we bought him and he came over at three months old. Thanks to the persistence of his owners, he is one of the only captive bred cats that can actually fill his lungs and demonstrate his incredible speed. It's over in seconds, but it's as close as this top predator is going to get to the real thing. Or is it? Tony Blair's hunting act is toothless, it's flouted all over the country, and all it's proved so far is you can't prosecute a hound. If the Conservatives deliver on their manifesto election promise, it should be history by July 2010. We went to see Tim Bonner at the Countryside Alliance and asked him if he can see a light at the end of the tunnel and an end to this ridiculous piece of legislation. I think this summer we've seen perhaps the most extraordinary um, meeting of all was the, the MFHA AGM back in June. That's the Masters of Foxhounds. That's right. And the, uh, William Hague, uh, who's in all but name the deputy leader of the Conservative Party, came along to that meeting and he gave absolute confirmation that, that if there was a, a working majority for the Conservatives, so there was a Conservative government, the, the, the bill uh, to repeal the Hunting Act would be brought forward and it would be brought forward speedily. Something we ought to admit more often is that hunting is great fun. No excuses. The meets are social events that bind rural communities. Since 2005 it's been tough going, but after four years of working and playing within the law, the police say they'll no longer seek to prosecute huntsmen. The CPS have dropped charges and a hunt supporter has lost his life. If the situation weren't so tragic, it would be laughable. In reality, most hunts are continuing much as normal. Foxes are still being killed, but they're being killed accidentally. And the publicity surrounding the ban means more people are going hunting than ever before. It just goes to show, where there's a will, there's a way. And that's why people try and exploit loopholes, such as hunts inviting birds of prey out for a day's hack across the fields as a way of sidestepping the law, much to the disappointment of the falconers. We deplore hunts who use this as a loophole uh, because we don't believe they have A, the skill, or B, the motive to use the bird they're using as a loophole to actually conduct themselves properly. It wasn't just the foxes that the band's proponents were hoping to save. Anti-hunt groups claim it has saved the 250 hares a year that Britain's coursing clubs killed. That's something that Alan Ames misses. He doesn't have lurches anymore, but he and his son Johnny do have a cheetah. So where does young Bermani sit within the ACT, what with him being a C-A-T and not a D-O-G? Well, we were invited by Alan to film something a bit different. We're in a deer farm in Essex to see Bermani rekindle his instincts, and it's all perfectly legal. Johnny and Bermani are as close as man and cat can be. So why is he teaching Bermani about hunting? Johnny knows what he can do within the strict laws that govern ownership of such an exotic animal, but he also wants to give his cat a chance to enjoy its natural instincts. It's not as easy as you'd think. This cat is more bag puss than bag hearer. It's an uphill struggle for Johnny. There's a rabbit over there. Um, no. Thanks. Not today, but thanks. There's another one over there. No, I, I don't think I will. We tried it in daytime. We tried it in the evening. We practically tried it at night. And then Bermani called for his bed. I think I'll have a little lie down. His bed's actually a kind of comfort blanket for him. Where are Deer Park in, in Essex. What, what are you trying to achieve today? Well, all we want to do is start uh, really learning how to teach a, a cheetah to hunt. Um, I mean, the idea is, is Bumani's obviously been ham reared and uh, is very, you know, friendly with us. But what we hope to do one day is breed and release cheetahs into the wild in Africa. So, in order to do it, uh, we thought it would be good to have a good bit of practice before we leave. Um, so by coming here, it's a great way for us to experiment and uh, to actually see what it involves training the cheetah to hunt. 
So if I spend a long time teaching Bumani, he can be the one that will teach the future cubs how to hunt in the wild. Yeah. Has he, has he ever seen a wild rabbit before, Alan? Uh, not until the other day. I mean, he's eaten plenty of them, yeah. but I don't think he actually knows what they are. He knows the smell, doesn't he? He knows the smell. You can see him doing the bushes up and down mm. the yeah. side. Yeah, but I'm not, I don't think he actually relates the rabbits that he's fed from a freezer to the ones that are hopping around in that field out there. Going back to um, to Africa, the, the the conservation side of it, a, a cheetahs are threatened status at the moment. Yeah, we're, uh, cheetahs are an endangered species. Uh, there was a hundred thousand cheetahs left in the wild about a hundred years ago, um, and today it's about twelve and a half thousand left. So the numbers have dropped so quickly. This is why we think if we're going to bother having cheetahs in captivity, then we should really make the really next step forward and start trying to release captive bred cubs. Or I don't see there being any point in breeding cheetahs anyway. As a last resort, Johnny decides to drag some of Bamani's food on a string behind the car. And that finally gets him moving. It took a major government inquiry and 700 hours of parliamentary time to ban fox hunting. It'll take a morning's work to repeal the ban. The law is a laughing stock in the countryside and a repeal can't come soon enough.